right guys, so this video here, we're gonna deal with cutting this frame, okay? Uh, so there's there's several different types of S10 trucks you can buy to do this work, right? The truck that I bought was a standard cab long bed, okay? And that particular setup has a wheelbase of 118 inches. The 48 Chevy truck has a wheelbase of 116 and a half inches. So there's an inch and a half difference between the wheelbase of this truck and the wheelbase of the 48. This truck here is the easiest one to work with, and that's why I bought it because it's a standard cab long bed. Now you can buy uh, a short bed truck, you can buy an extended cab truck that's uh, probably a short bed. I don't know if they make extended cab long bed or not, maybe they do. But anyhow, any of the other vehicles you buy, you have to cut the frame and either shorten it or lengthen it. So if you buy, let's say, if this would have been a standard cab short bed, I would have to cut the frame. Let me show you if you are going to buy or if you have a S10 standard cab short bed truck, then what you need to do is you need to right here. So there's the front cross member assembly and where it comes right to here where this where it goes from a boxed in frame to just a uh, U-channel frame right here. You have to cut all these welds with a grinder, cut them around and then lengthen this frame by, I don't remember what it is, I, I think it's around six or eight inches. You have to lengthen it out and then weld it back together. So that's if you have a short bed with a regular cab. Now if you have an extended cab, uh, short bed or extended cab long bed, which I don't know, like I said, I don't know which one they make. I know they make an extended cab short bed, but um, I believe that it's longer than this frame is, and you still have to shorten it. Are you? No, I, I take it back. It's longer than this frame is, so you have to shorten it. So you still have to cut this, and then you have to cut out a section and move it together and then re-weld it. And if it's, a, of course, if it's an extended cab long bed, you would have to, uh, you know, cut an even longer section of it out and move it in. So anything except the standard cab uh, long bed frame, you have to cut it here and either shorten it or lengthen it, one of the two. So you guys might want to remember that when you're looking, if you're, if you're getting started on something like this and you're looking for a truck, you want, the, the easiest thing to do, the most simplest thing to do is to get what I got, which is a standard cab long bed S10. That's the best, that's the easiest one to do. I have to cut a section out of the rear of the frame and I have to cut well I mean they all you have to cut the section out of the front because you got to fit the front bumper but back here I have to cut five and a half inches out of the end of the frame rail here so that's five and a half inch piece let me show you so that's five and a half inches as you can see I gotta get it on there there we go five and a half inches so I cut five and a half inches out of this frame so what I did is I took I took a, a sharpie and a square and I just squared it up and you can see I cut around the frame well I'm gonna cut I mean I've, I've already got that one cut off but I want to cut it off first to show you what it looks like the before and after so that's that's the before and after now the, the other thing is is if you're using any frame but this frame since you don't have to cut the rear of this off because you're either you're cutting it in the middle there and making adjustments either longer or shorter in the middle you don't have to cut this back here because you're making your adjustments there you can use these holes in the end of the frame here to mount your rear bumper brackets but as you can see on this one here I'm cutting off just in front of this bolt hole so I'm not gonna have any bolt holes because my frame my brackets gonna go up in here and these bolt holes won't work so I gotta drill new holes through this frame to mount my to mount my bolts in there or to mount my bracket but I'm not gonna do that I, right now I've ordered uh, a bunch of bolts for it today and I don't know how long I'm gonna take to get here but when they get here I'll, I'll do it and by the way there's I, I'll have to get the the well I, I'll show you the bolt list here okay so here's the bolt list so we've got grade 5 3 8 16 by 1 inch bolts 
grade 5 7 16 by 3 and a half inch bolts and 4 inch bolts grade 5 3 8 by 2 and a half inch bolts quarter inch bolts carriage bolts 3 8 carriage bolts uh, and long number two and a half these are four and then we got a few half inch bolts as well so the grade five bolts are mainly used for uh, mounting the 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 brackets to the frame like the cab mount brackets and stuff like that and you can see here Russell's got it marked out where how many bolts go in each section so you can see that you can stop the video if you need to and pause it or whatever but you can see where they go okay the 7 16 bolts are used to mount uh, the cab to the actual 48 Chevy truck cab to the cab mount. So there's two of them there in the front that are 4 inch and two in the back that are 4.5 inch. Okay? All right, the grade 5 3 16 or 3 8 bolts here, they're, they're a little longer, 2.5 inch bolts. They're used to mount the running board legs to the cab mounts. Okay? And then we've got uh oh wait i've got these quarter inch no okay quarter inch uh quarter inch by one carriage bolts those are used to mount the running boards running boards to the running the, the running board legs yes that's correct so that them are used to mount the running boards on the truck and then you've got three eight sixteen two and a half inch carriage bolts those are used to mount the bed the bed to the cross member and you've got 3 8 16 uh, 4 inch long bolts and those are used to mount the the bed to the frame so okay so that's the cross member that's the frame itself and then you've got half inch grade 8 bolts and those are grade or no those are well he says standard grade but I got grade 5 so uh, half inch 13 by one and a half inch bolts they're used to mount the bumper brackets to the frame so you need four on the front and two in the back half inch bolts and actually I didn't need four in the front because I have got the speed nut in the frame so I actually only need two but I, I went ahead and ordered them so whatever but anyhow it, and I want to tell you guys on this I ordered everything in here I ordered grade five you don't have to do that but the reason I did is because it doesn't make sense to me to put a grade five bolt in a hole and then put a grade three nut on it because it doesn't it, it doesn't make it a grade five anymore. Whatever whatever the lowest grade of fastener you're using is the grade of of the entire fastener. So if I use a grade five bolt, I need to use a grade five nut. And you may not be able to find those at your hardware store, but you can find them online. I went to a, a website called uh, Bolt Depot. And when I get the receipt, when I get the bolts in, I'll show you the receipt from them so you can look them up and, and know who they are. But that's who I went through. I went through a company called Bolt Depot and online. And with shipping and everything else, I paid about 130 bucks for all these fasteners. But they're all grade 5. The only thing that's not grade 5 in this whole setup is the lock washers. Even the flat washers that I ordered were grade 5. But you're tightening down steel against steel on a frame. So you want the washers to be strong. You want them to be able to stand, withstand the torque that you put on them. So I ordered grade five washers, grade five bolts, grade five nuts. The only thing I didn't order grade five was the lock washers because lock washers aren't, they're just a single grade. So, you know, of course, bigger ones are going to be heavier, you know, but the half inch ones are probably going to be heavier steel than the three eighths ones. But anyhow, they should be good quality. It's all grade five stuff, okay? So now I've got this, uh, rear frame one side cut off so let's go ahead and cut off the other side okay so we're gonna do that I'll get you guys in here where you can see what I'm doing there you go zooming in a little bit you don't need to see my mug now one thing I'll say before I start this okay uh, well actually a couple things I bought I bought this grinder at Harbor Freight yesterday, it's a Warrior four and a half inch angle grinder. It cost me fifteen dollars. They, they had it on Black Friday clearance or Black Friday sale yesterday. Now the one thing I don't like about it is it's got a five eighths arbor, and I have five eighths cutoff wheels. But if you look, well, I can't I can't take it apart because I can't show it to you. But the arbor, 
the five ace arbor is at the bottom of the shaft. So if you, if I put this, how this thing should be set up is I should have this washer, then this cutoff wheel, and then this washer on top. But when I did that, the cutoff wheel would not center because this spindle here is not a true five eighths because it's threaded. So what I ended up doing was putting the cutoff wheel on first and then put the two washers on top. This is, this is the one that screws on. That one there just slips on. So I slipped that one on, then I screwed this one in place, and that holds it, and it works pretty good. So like I said, 15 bucks, and I've already cut one side of the frame. You can see that right there. I cut that side. It works great, no problems. Now we're going to cut the other side. This thing, I mean, it is a little bit weak when, you're, when I'm using it. I can tell it's kind of dragging it down. But I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm just grinding it. And the other thing I want to tell you guys, please use ear protection when you do this, okay? I've already lost hearing in one of my ears, so I only need one earplug now. But please use ear protection. You don't want to be like me and be deaf and everybody ha have to ask me to repeat themselves all the time. So use ear protection. All right, let's get this, let's get this frame cut off. chair a little chair so I could sit on it to cut this side piece off probably can't even see you. I'm petting you and they don't even know what I'm doing. All right, look out. Move out of the way. Back up. Okay, here we go. got to get a creeper to get underneath and cut uh there, there we go cut the bottom side down there now one thing you want to remember when you're on a creeper on the floor you're going to have sparks that are going to land on you so you kind of want to be careful with your grinder when you're down there all right let's cut that last piece off or make that last cut i should say
got that piece cut off. There it is. The vibration on the frame is making stuff fall on the floor, but no big deal. You always want to clean up your cut after you're done. So I'm going to clean the, I got flashing on here. I got a little edge I can feel that'll cut my hand, so I'm going to clean that up. There we go, got five and a half inches cut off, both ends of the frame, should be, should, this should be five and a half inches as well, and as you can see, that's exactly what I cut off, five and a half inches. Okay, so now, we've got some spare pieces of the frame here. That's too bad I couldn't take these. It's too bad you couldn't cut these off the end of the frame and use them to lengthen the frame if you needed to, but they're really not long. If you need more than that to lengthen the frame. All right. So I don't need those. Now let's, uh, let me get a, one of those rear bumper plates and we'll look and see how it fits on here. We'll get down to this one here so you can see better. All right, now this says rear bumper mounts are made to use the original rear bumper brackets from three quarter ton truck or half ton truck. For three quarter ton tr bracket, the mounts will go over the frame at the rear and mount inside. Uh, okay, over the frame and mount inside. Okay, so they'll go like this on the inside, that way. They won't go that way, they'll go that way. Okay. And let's see what else it says. It says, focus, come on, focus. Focus, dang it. Come on, there we go. It says only tack weld the frame side bracket to the S10 frame at the rear. The bracket should be fit inside the frame like a boxing plate. Add the middle bracket to the frame bracket. Now install my bumper, which I can't do. Leaving the frame brackets loose will help you align the bumper to your taste, and that's going to come down the road, okay? So you can run it low like the factory installer or high by flipping the entire bumper over. This is also, this also has good adjustment to move in or out. You can tuck it further in my in, in my remove in tuck it further in by removing a portion of the original brackets. Okay, so for a half ton bracket, which is what I have, the mounts will go over the frame and put the mount outside the frame. Okay, so I got a half ton. So let's drag these brackets out here and look at them. Frame. All right. 
Okay, this is rear bumper frame side times two. Um, the picture, so this, this bracket, as you can see, it's notched on one side. And I'm not sure which way it goes which, but if you look at this picture, this picture is, get it focused here, come on, focus, come on. Focus on the picture. Oh, come on. There we go. So that this is the passenger side. And the bracket is square with the end of the frame. So I'm assuming this one here would be an L. And also, the, the this portion of the bracket is on top. See that? I can't see the notch in the picture. So I have to assume the notch goes on the bottom and the notch goes towards the inside. So this bracket here, this bracket here goes just like that right there. Okay. Um, none of the holes light up, which sucks. Because I would think they would. Well, I got one hole right here that's sort of lined up. I can drill out. But, well. No, not really. Not really lined up very well. I don't know. I'm not sure why the bottom is, is notched, but it is. But none of the holes in the bottom. There's a hole here. A hole right here and a hole right here. So I got to drill all three of those holes. I have to drill all those holes. So that sits like that. And he said in the instructions, he said that, um, where's it at here? I got to look at it. He says, the bumper brackets will need to be loose at the bumper and at the middle attachment and at the middle bracket to frame bracket. When you have or you like it, you can tighten it all down. It'll be very rigid. That's definitely true. Okay, so, but what I wanted to look at here is the rear mounts are made to use the original rear bumper brackets from a three-quarter ton or half-ton truck, but... Then he sent me, this is new stuff here. So these are the new brackets that he sent me. So I think his, his plan here, and he, look, those have got square holes for a carriage bolt. So I would think that his new plan here is for these brackets to take the place of the factory brackets. I'm guessing. I don't know. Um... Hold on, I gotta go grab a knife. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got four of these short brackets and four of these long brackets. And this says bumper outside, and that says bumper center, which I'm not sure why it says center. I don't know. Um, I guess maybe it should say bumper inside. I don't know, but... This is probably, go, that one probably goes in the middle of the bumper on the inside, and that one goes on the outside. So I'm assuming that these brackets, uh, well, I don't know. I'm not sure how they go, to tell you the truth. Uh, maybe like that. That doesn't look right to me. I don't know. I have to figure that out. It doesn't look right to me. I don't know. I'm not sure. I have to ask. I guess I'll have to ask Russ how it goes. Russ, if you happen to be watching this, uh, I need to know. I don't know if it goes like that because there's no picture in the in the uh, description or anything. So, but. It's going to be a while before I put the bumpers on anyhow, so I'm not worried about it, but I just wanted to show these to you. 
uh, I'll, I'll have to ask Russ about it, and I will get back to you guys and let you know what I find out. Hopefully, we'll be able to find out something here pretty quick. So, anyhow, uh, that's the video for the back frame modification. Remember, hold on a second. Remember, if if you got an S10 standard cab extended or standard cab long bed like I do, you don't have to modify the frame in the middle at all. You just cut five and a half inches off the end, off the back, and then you cut the front to fit the front bumper brackets. So that's the only modifications you got to have to it. Um, if you got any other truck, whether it's a standard cab short bed, you got to lengthen the frame and a extended cab, shorter long bed. I'm pretty sure you got to lengthen the frame on those. So you shorten the frame on the sh on the regular cab short bed and extend the frame on the extended cab shorter long bed. I'm, I'm not sure, Russ. If you're watching this, if you could clarify that, that'd be great. And uh, I'll get I'll get the information back to you guys. I want I want to make this accurate for everybody. So, but that's what I know about it. You know, I'm I'm doing this. You know, I'm doing this. As we go, when you're watching these videos, you're watching me learn this as I do it. I've never done this before, so, but it, it's not that complicated. It really isn't. You know, you need some basic, uh, you know, cutting and welding skills. You need to know how to how to measure, you know, and how to have a little bit of common sense, you know, because you want to be careful what you're doing. You don't want to make mistakes, because especially if you cut this frame in the middle and you lengthen it or shorten it and you don't do it right. You're going to be really sorry in the end because you're going to be tearing that truck all the way back down to the frame again and redoing the frame over again. So you want to double check, triple check, quadruple check yourself. Uh, like they always say, measure once or measure twice, cut once. In this case, I would measure multiple times. I would measure down each frame rail. I'd measure across in an X pattern, but you, you, that frame has to be square when you put it back together. If it's not square, your truck's going to track. And you're going to destroy tires and it's going to drive like crap going down the road so you got to remember that guys if you don't know how to do that kind of stuff you probably ought to take it to an expert and have them lengthen the length or shorten the frame for you because it's going to save you a lot of heartache down the road or get a friend who knows how to do it anyhow so that's that's it for now for the for the back frame rail russ chime in on this please and i'm going to start working on the front here i've got still got to weld the cross member together but i can do that i'll do more videos on that so this is it for the back frame rail all right guys talk to you later bye